All right, welcome back to my mom's basement, ladies and gentlemen. I am back with Dana White ahead of UFC 280. This card is an MMA fan's dream. I am already balls deep in the countdowns, the pre-fight stuff, all of it. I'm loving it. You got to be pumped as well. How are you? I'm very excited about it, and I'm excited to get back to Abu Dhabi. Um, yeah, I've, I've been I've been waiting for this card for a long time, buddy. Has this week been more hectic than usual, or same old, same old? Nah, we're just getting started. We're, I'll tell you what this week is. This thing is is trending off the charts already. It it start it, it it actually started on on Saturday. My my analytics guy hit me up and said we are crushing this event on pre buys on Saturday. How about that? That doesn't surprise me at all. Obviously, the main event, Charles Oliveira, Islam Makhachev. Both fighters have such loyal fan bases. Both fighters have such great backgrounds where they come from that respect and love fighting it has to be trending off the charts. I saw Charles Oliveira walking a lion like it was a dog the other day. Did you see that? I did. Yeah, when you I, see I, that, I, is any part of you go like, Jesus Christ, man, don't get bit by a lion. We can't get a fight canceled due to a lion bite. Yeah, exactly. No, th this has been incredible. I saw a video that he posted the other day. I don't know if UFC did it. If our team did it, but uh, it, it was incredible, uh, you know, sort of telling the story of Oliveira. And I mean, you, you couldn't ask for a better main event. Two of the baddest dudes in the world and that weight class in their prime facing off for the title. And, and you know what? I've been saying it all day. Oliveira is one of those guys who sort of, you know, whether you're a casual or, or a hardcore, he flies under the radar. Um. You know, he's on an 11-fight win streak. He's got the second longest win streak in UFC history behind Habib. Um, he's got the most finishes in UFC history, most submissions in UFC history, tied for overall UFC post-fight bonuses, uh, performance of the night bonuses. He, he's got the most, most submissions in lightweight and featherweight division. I mean, this guy just has record after record after record. And we've heard that Alexander Volkanovsky is the backup for this one. Does that mean that he's going to get the next title shot at that weight class necessarily? Well, it makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, obviously Benil and Gamera right there as well. They, they're on this card, and that's an amazing fight. 100%. Um, another one, Aljamain Sterling versus TJ Dillashaw, two polarizing figures. I'm obviously rooting for the New York guy myself. Do you think Dillashaw is ever going to shake that steroid use reputation uh yeah I, I you know first of all you know the guy's probably i don't know this for a fact but i would assume he's one of the most tested guys in in the company right now you saw it's probably all over him um but i think that you know he made a mistake and he handled it like a man let me tell you what we've had a lot of guys throughout the history of this company who have been busted for steroids and handled it the exact opposite way they handled it like, not like men um and uh, Dillashaw did. He took it on the chin, and uh, you got to respect him for that. It is a little bit ironic that he owns a place called Clean Juice, though, right? Does he really? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit ironic. Yeah. Uh, Piotr Jan versus Sean O'Malley, another one I want to touch on. The bantamweight division is so stacked, and there seems to be so many contenders in that division. But do you see the winner of this fight getting the next title shot based on not only – their, their reputation but their name value obviously everyone's talking about this as well what, what, what fight is that i was still i still had clean juice in my head and uh <laughs> you, you fucked me up on that one who, who, who are the guy you're talking about sean o'malley and jan oh yeah yeah of course uh yeah listen this is one of those fights where you know peter jan is the number one ranked guy in the world o'malley is 27 years old he's uh you know he's 15 and one he's got the experience uh, for this fight, he's got the reach and height advantage. He's got knockout power. You know, he's got all the tools to win this fight. He's just got to get out there and do it. And it's no easy task. I'm not saying whatever. But Peter Jan is an absolute savage. But, you know, there was this comparison recently where Sean O'Malley said, I would love to be the next Conor McGregor and be a big global superstar. Well, it's about winning key fights. He's already got that, that thing that people like about him. Now it's about winning key fights. This this fight for him is like, uh, you know, Connor's Jose Aldo fight. Jose Aldo also just announced his retirement between the last time I interviewed you. How did you feel about that? I know you're obviously not one to, like, talk guys back into fights, but as a fan, I thought he had one more left in him at least. Yeah, you know, he, he he's uh, 
he's had a great run, man. He's had a great run, done a lot of great things. He's made a lot of money and, you know, I I'd say it's time for, for him to hang it up too. You know, he, he owns a successful business in, in, uh, in Brazil, you know, every, everything, everything that guy wants and needs, he's got, <clears throat> why keep doing it? When you look back at the career of Jose Aldo, uh, what favorite memories come to mind? Well, he's one of the all time greats. He's one of the, one of the, one of the best ever, an absolute legend of the sport. Uh, one of my moments is when he jumped out of the octagon in Brazil and the whole crowd started carrying him around. Uh, it was pretty epic. As a Conor McGregor, Stan, Mark, whatever you want to call me, he was the perfect guy to stand opposite Conor during the world tour as well. Like that entire world tour is one of my favorite things the UFC ever did. Do you think you'll ever do anything like that ever again? It was incredible. Yeah, if we get, if we get the right fight and I think it it, it, it warrants it, we definitely do it. Um, but yeah, that, that thing was fun, man. That whole, the promotion for that fight was incredible. And I don't know if you remember the commercial, but the commercial for that fight was awesome too. Both those guys walking down the streets. In walking Vegas. down, taking the sunglasses off yeah, and everything. That's right. Yeah. Um, obviously, I got to ask you about the biggest news of the week. You knew this one was coming. Hasbullah has signed to the UFC. He announced it on his social media. When he announced it, he said he is signed to fight in the UFC. Is that true? Is that accurate? I didn't know this was coming. Um, but yes, we did sign Hasbullah. Um, and uh, what, what, what he's going to end up doing remains to be seen. Okay. Remains to be seen. Did yep. Conor McGregor hit you up when, when this was announced? No. Okay, I was just curious. He has a lot to say about Hasbulla on social media. I know. I'm sure you've seen. Told you. I didn't I'm know. Yeah. Gonna fuck around and get his ass whooped if he runs into him out in the streets. <laughs> Is he going to be at the fights? Yeah, he'll he'll be in Makachev's corner, right? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. I I loved the picture of him in the fight kit and everything. Uh, he said that'll be available to buy on UFC.com soon. So look out for that, everyone. He he will be there. And thoughts on the big fight announced this past week? What? Tito Ortiz versus Chael Sonnen too. Freedom oh, Fight Night. Not. Yeah. Oh, huge. Where, where, <laughs> where is that? Uh, Freedom Fight Night. What is that? <laughs> to be quite honest, Dana, I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Where is it? Where are they at? Maybe Florida. Okay. I'm surprised you didn't see it. I did not see it. Uh, yeah, you threw me for a loop there. Big fight announcement. I was like. What big fight announcement? <laughs> Listen, I, I, I like Chael Sonnen, and uh, Chael's always been fucking great. And uh, good for him. I, ho I, hope, I hope they make a lot of money. How did the event with Zuckerberg in attendance go? There was obviously a lot of secrecy and a lot of talk around that whole fight week. How'd it go? When, when the that was great. We had fun. We had a blast. Yeah. He's a great dude. I like him. I like him a lot. And uh, his wife is an absolute sweetheart. And all of his crew that he's with are good people we had fun and uh yeah why was there so so much secrecy around that event around did he rent it out was he invited why why was there so much talk around that that's just nobody's business I, you know what i mean I, I i was having something that i had going on there on saturday and you know nobody needs to know fair enough you guys are on a need to know basis with me when i need you to know i'll let you know I figured that. I wanted to ask about Patty, and honestly, I put it to the side because I was like, he'll announce Patty when he's ready to announce Patty. Is that right? Very good point. All right. I figured. To bring it back to UFC 280, which fighters on the prelims excite you the most? I don't know if you've done your Now You Know video yet. I assume you haven't. Yeah, we so haven't early yet. in the week. We haven't yet, but it's so hard. I mean, when you look at it, um, you know, it's hard – you got to look at like uh, Darius and Gamrot. Yep. Great fight. I mean, Ozdemir's on the prelims. Yeah. Bilal Muhammad on the prelims. Exactly. That's that's a it's fight with a big implications. I know people give Bilal a lot of shit, but that fight has big implications. Yeah, he's fighting Brady. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's, it's an awesome card, man. It's going to be a fun night. And and I say this all the time, but I'm going to say it again. If you've never been to Abu Dhabi, you have to go to a fight there. The nicest hotels in the world. Incredible restaurant. I'm a, literally in between this call. We were just laying out all my dinners for, for this week. In, the most incredible restaurants, the most incredible service, uh, and, and probably the most unbelievable shopping in the world, too. 
I was there at the worst time, truly, in the midst of COVID when it was like people in hazmat suits coming to my door to poke me in the nose every morning. It was... But it, hey, it was still better than being here. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, we got you to go to the I mean? fights. Yeah, got to go we to three fight nights fights. in that time. There were restaurants that you could go to and eat at and, you know, and you didn't have to deal with any of the bullshit. When do you go out? I leave uh, Wednesday. An 18 hour flight. That's rough. Yep. And you're going Why back not to Lorenzo. Lorenzo's going with me. Do you have any uh, looking for a fight type of uh, filming events going on? My next looking for a fight is going to be in Boston in uh, December. Oh, awesome. Looking forward to that. Like a cage yeah. Titans? Is that you up in Boston? I would, you to. For it. I would love let's to. I would love to. Let's do something. Me and you will do something for it. Let's do it. I'm there. Deal. Guaranteed. Awesome. All right, Dana. I appreciate it. Uh, enjoy your trip to Abu Dhabi. Enjoy all the fancy restaurants you'll be eating at. Send pics. Yeah, buddy. The story. Do it I all. Yeah. It. I'm fucking keto, though. Ah, oh, yeah, because of the whole the 10.4 years. Yeah, uh, yeah. I am Get that up. 11. No, get that up. Live longer. We need you around. I'm trying. I'm shooting for 11 now. All right. I'll Later, talk buddy. to you soon.